the blood bottler. Suddenly, a tremendous thumping noise came from outside the cave entrance, and a voice like thunder shouted, Runt! Is you there, Runt? I is hearing you jabbling. Who is you jabbling to, Runt? Look out, cried the Banshee. Is the blood bottler? Before he had finished speaking, the stone was rolled aside, and a 50-foot giant, more than twice as tall and wide as, as the BFG, came striding into the cave. He was naked except for a dirty little piece of cloth around his bottom. Sophie was on the tabletop. The enormous, partly eaten snoz cover was lying near her. She ducked behind it. The creature came clumping into the cave and stood towering over the BFG. Who was you jabbling to in here just now? He boomed. I is jabbling to myself, the BFG answered. Pilfo's fizz, shouted the blood bottle. Buck Swallop, you is talking to a human being, if that's what I is thinking. No, no, cried the BFG. Yes, yes. I is guessing you has snitched away a human being and brought it back to your bunghole as a pet. So now I is winkling it out and guzzling for extra snacks before my supper. The poor BFG was very nervous. There's no, no one in here. Well, why don't you leave me alone? The blood bottler pointed a finger as large as tree trunk at the BFG. Renty little sc scum screwer, piffling little swish figgler, swimpy little bottlewort, grooty little pox whistler. I is now going to search the primroses. He grabbed the BFG by the arm. And you is going to help me do it. Us together is going to winkle out this tasteful little human being, he shouted. The BFG had intended to whisk Sophie off the table as soon as he got the chance and hide her behind his back, but now there was no hope in doing this. Sophie peered around the chewed off end of the enormous snozz cumber, watching the two giants as they moved away down the cave. The blood bottler was a gruesome sight. His skin was reddish pink. There was black hair sprouting on his chest and arms and on his stomach. Their hair on his head was long and dark and tangled. His foul face was round and squashy looking. His eyes were tiny black holes. The nose was small, but the mouth was huge. It spread right across his face, almost ear to ear. And it had lips that were like two gigantic purple frank furthers lying on one on top of the other. Craggy yellow teeth stuck out between two purple frank further lips and rivers of spit ran down over the chin. It was not in the least difficult to believe that this ghastly brute ate men, women, and children every night. The blood bottler, still holding the BFG by the arm, was examining the rows and rows of bottles. You is and your pibbling bottles. What is you putting in them? Nothing that would interest you. You is only interested in guzzling human beings, the BFG answered. And you is dotty as a dog squaggler. Soon the blood bottle would be coming back, Sophie told herself, and he was bound to search the tabletop. But she couldn't possibly jump off the table. It was 12 feet high. She'd break a leg. The snozz cover, although it was as thick as a permeator, was not going to hide her if the blood bottle picked it up. She examined the chewed off end. It had large seeds in the middle, each one as big as a melon. They were embedded in soft, slimy stuff. Taking care to stay out of sight, Sophie reached forward and scooped away half a dozen of those seeds. This left a hole in the middle of the snozz cumber, large enough for her to crouch in so long as she rolled herself into a ball. She crawled into it. It was a wet and slimy hiding place, but what did that matter if it was gonna save her from being eaten? The blood bottler and the BFG were coming back towards the table now. The BFG was nearly fainting with fear. Any moment, he was telling himself, Sophie would be discovered and eaten. Suddenly, the blood bottler grabbed a half-eaten snozz number. The BFG stared at the bare table. Sophie, where is you? He thought desperately. You cannot possibly jump laying off that high table, so where is you hiding, Sophie? 
So this is the filthy rots of glubbage you is eating, boomed the blood bottler, holding up the partly eaten snot cover. You must be cockles to be guzzling such rub squash. For a moment, the blood bottler seemed to have forgotten about his search for Sophie. The BFG decided to lead him further off the track. That is the scrum diddly umptious snot cover I is guzzling it gleefully every night and day. Is you never trying a snus cumber by blood bottler? Human beings is juicier. You is tum talking Rami tot, the BFG said, growing braver by the second. He was thinking that if only he could get the blood bottler to take one bite of the repulsive vegetable, the sheer foulness of its flavor would send him bellowing out of the cave. I is happy to let you sample it, but please, when you see how truly glumptious it is, do not be guzzling the whole thing. Leave me up a little snitchet for my supper. The blood bottler stared suspiciously with small piggy eyes at the snus cover. Sophie, crouching inside the chewed off end, began to tremble all over. You is not switch fiddling me, is you? said the BF, blood bottler. Never, cried the BFG passionately. Take a bite, I am positive you'll be shouting out, oh, how scrum delicious this wonder veg is. The BFG could see the greedy blood bottler's mouth beginning to water more than ever at the prospect of extra food. Vegetables is very good for you. It is not wholesome always to be eating meaty things. Just this once, I is going to taste this rotsome eats of yours. But I is warning you that if this is, it is filsome, I is smashing it over your sludgy little head. He picked up the snus cover. He began to raise it on his long journey to his mouth some 50 feet in the air. So if he wanted to scream, don't, that that would have been an extra, even more certain death. Crouching among the slimy seeds, she felt herself being lifted up and up and up. Suddenly there was a crunch as it as the blood bottle bit a huge hunk off the end. Sophie saw his yellow teeth clamping together just a few inches from her head. Then there was utter darkness. She was in his mouth. She caught a whiff of his evil smelling breath. It stank of bad meat. She wanted for the she waited for the teeth to go crunch once more and she prayed that she would be killed quickly. Ugh, roared the blood bottler. Ugh, well died. And then he spat all the great lumps of the snus cumber that were in his mouth, as well as Sophie herself went shooting out across the cave. If, her, if Sophie had stuck, struck the stony wall of the cave, she would most certainly have been killed. Instead, she hit the soft folds of the BFG's black cloak hanging against the wall. She dropped to the ground, half stunned. She crawled under the hem of the cloak and there she crouched. You little swine buggler, roared the blood bottler. You little pig swiller. He rushed at the BFG and smashed what was left of the snaz cumber over his head. Fragments of the filthy vegetable splashed all over the cave. You is not loving it, the BFG asked innocently, rubbing his head. Loving it? That is the most disgusting taste that is ever touching my teeth. You must be buggles to be swallowed and sludge like that. Every night you could be galloping off happy as a hamburger and gobbling juicy human beans. Eating human beans is wrong and evil. It is guzzly and glumptious, shouted the blood butter. And tonight... I is galloping off to Chile to swallow a few human chili beans. I is you wishing to know why I is choosing chili? I is not wishing to know anything, the BFG said, very dignified. I is choosing chili because I is fed up with the taste of Esquimos. It is important. I has plenty of cold eats in this scuttling hot weather. And the next coldest thing is an Esquimau and is a chili bean. Human beans from Chile is very chilly. Horrible. You ought to be ashamed, the BFG said. Other giants is all saying that he's wanting to gallop off to England tonight to guzzle school chiddlers. I is very fond indeed of English school chiddlers. They has a nice inky bookie flavor. Perhaps 
I I will change my mind and go to England with them. You is disgusting, the BFG said. And you is an insult to the giant peoples. You is not fit to be a giant. You is a squinky little squibbler. You is a pibbly little pip squid. You is a cream puff nut. And with that, the horrible blood bottling giant strode out of the cave. The BFG ran to the entrance of the cave entrance and quickly rolled the stone back into its place. Sophie, Sophie, where is you, Sophie? Sophie emerged from under the hem of the black cloak. I'm here. The BFG picked her up and held her tenderly in the palm of his hand. Oh, I am so happy to be finding you all in one lump. I was in his mouth. You was what? cried the BFG. Sophie told him what had happened. And there I was telling him to eat the filsome snoz cumber and you was all the time inside it? Not much fun. Just look at you, you poor little chiddler, cried the BFG. You was all covered in snoz cumber and giant spit. He set about cleaning her up the best he could. I is hating those other giants more than ever now, he said. You know what I should like? What? I should like to find a way of disappearing them, every single one. I'd be glad to help you. Let me see if I can think up a way of doing it. 